Live from the NBA Finals in Los Angeles, California, welcome to the T-Mobile Halftime Report. He goes by one name, Kobe. 12 points in the first half. With four minutes and 54 seconds left in the half, the Lakers led by two. They then go on an 11-2 run to close the half. L.A. leads it 50-41 to at halftime. Welcome to the T-Mobile Halftime Report. Stuart Scott alongside Mike Wilbon, John Barry, Laker legend, Hall of Famer, five-time champion, Irvin Magic Johnson. Guys, we could talk about how the Lakers are out shooting the Celtics, but Magic, big picture, what at the first half of game one, what does it tell you about this series? This is going to be a long and great series. These two teams are so even, and so what we get the chance to see is great defense. We knew the Celtics would play great defense, right. but we saw the Lakers play great defense in the first half, only holding the Celtics to 41% shooting. This is going to be just a fantastic, physical, great series. Well, i got to talk about Kobe Bryant. I mean, maybe the best postseason he's ever had, and that's saying something. Uh, not huge numbers tonight, just 12 points. He does have four assists, but this guy has been on an absolute tear. Killed the Phoenix Suns over 30 in every single game. He took the ball to the basket tonight. Poor Celtic defense. How can you not come to Kobe Bryant? He's got the pull-up, jump shots, assist to Paul Gasol, who's able to knock down shots. And then nobody makes tougher shots than Kobe Bryant in the NBA. This guy's been on fire throughout the postseason. 2008 made him very mad that he lost to the Boston Celtics. And he's hungry and ready. And he's looking awfully good. You know, as great as Kobe was, and undeniably, JB, he was great. Ron Artest, Pau Gasol, Andrew Bynum, 25 points, 12 rebounds, Stu, and more importantly, nobody's in foul trouble. I mean, you know, Gasol has no personal fouls in the first half. Kobe, at some point, is going to need some assistance from those big guys. I know, Irvin, you talked about that in the pregame. If, they, if the Lakers, and we've seen in these playoffs from the first round through the last, if the Lakers can establish those big guys early in the game, they are difficult to beat, and then they don't have to rely so much on Kobe, that's what we saw in the first half. And establishing that toughness that both of you all talked about that the Lakers didn't have a couple of years ago. JB mentioned Kobe Bryant, maybe his best postseason ever. This is Kobe's 192nd career postseason game. 192. And here's what he's doing right now. Kobe Bryant is averaging 30 points a game this postseason. Okay? Guys, he's also... He's averaging a career best in three-point shooting percentage in the postseason. He's averaging a second highest ever field goal percentage in the postseason highest assist <laughs> and still 30 points and five rebounds a game still ahead of the t-mobile halftime report a film session with kobe bryant how watching video of nba legends past helps mold him into a four-time champion and future hall of famer this halftime report welcome back to the t-mobile halftime report you might have heard the expression imitation is the sincerest form of flattery Nobody understands that better than Kobe Bryant. From the time Kobe was six years old, growing up in Italy, his grandfather would send him videotapes of NBA legends in their prime. From studying that, Kobe's game benefited from the studying and then impersonating some of the best who ever played the game. Recently, our Jackie McMullen sat down with Kobe to talk about how watching legends impacted the way he plays. You see a lot of similarities in players. Right? You know, there isn't a move that, that's a new move. There's nothing that hasn't been done before. I seriously have stolen all of these moves from these great players. <laughs> Let's look at Oscar Robertson. Take me through what you're watching here. What I watched when I was a kid was just watching his body position, how he uses his body, and then how he's freezing a defender and creating space and things like that. Yeah, he was blessed to have that big old booty. I don't have a big old booty, so I can't. <laughs> I gotta use other means to create space. I actually won the game with that one this morning. Right. <laughs> that quick release. Yeah. Same quick release. Yeah. Yes! Jerry West. His pull-up jump shot was absolutely vicious. See, that was just, he was more of a dynamic portrait. You see that right there? So Oscars was, you know, using his body, but you see Jerry's kind of like me. He's wiry, kind of uses quickness to get guys off. Nice, nice little up fake. I use that a lot too. Though. I'm actually watching the defender a lot and trying to figure out you know, what is he seeing as an offensive player to make him do what he's doing or why that, why that makes sense in terms of you know, what is he thinking at that moment and why did that move work. So tell me what you knew about Elgin Baylor. Everything I heard about Elgin, everything I read about Elgin was that he was 
Dr. J and Michael Jordan before Dr. J and Michael Jordan. You get to the basket, you do all these incredible things in the air. But I want to know, how did you get to the basket? <laughs> it's cool to be able to do all those fancy things, but how did you get there? What was the thing that set him apart? He had great footwork. Very explosive first step. Very strong, though. We forget of his size and how big he was and how strong he was. So once he dipped that shoulder and got by players, it was, it was basically a good night. You were at his mercy. That's pretty impressive. A lot of guys can't use the right foot being a foot, pivot foot, and the left foot being the foot that they use to fake. It's just an uncomfortable move for right-handed players. And he, I mean, he looked absolutely, absolutely natural in doing that. Magic's a lot of razzle-dazzle. He set that up from the beginning, though. He knew he had his man sitting right there, so it was just a matter of how he was going to get the ball to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he, he's seeing things before they ever happen. He's making these plays happen. Right. Yeah, that's what's crazy to me. I mean, he and I, you know, we're completely two different players. But still in all, there's a lot of things that I can learn, even just from my own. Just because I love the game. It's his vision that sets him apart, isn't it? His court vision? Yeah, I mean, he's. His passing ability and his ability to see things on the court, it's second to none, in my opinion. For some, it's passing. For me, I'm the best. I'm, I'm a scorer. I mean, that's what I do. I look at it as like uh, superheroes. You know, some have webs, some can fly, some can. You know what I mean? Everybody has their own thing that they do well or do better than, than the others. You were a Magic guy. Mm -hmm. You didn't even really like Jordan, right? No, you know, I wasn't a fan of his, actually. I was a big Magic fan, and so Michael was coming along, and it was kind of like a territorial kind of thing, <laughs> where, you know, I wanted to see Magic win. Uh, but then once I realized I wasn't going to be 6'9 like my dad, I was pretty much stuck at this height. <laughs> that I started seeing a lot of similarities in terms of physique and things like that, things that I could learn from him at that size and how he worked. I've literally learned so much from him. I just try to, you know, do him proud and do Jerry proud and Oscar Robinson proud and guys came before me because I learned so much from them. So, so that's that's exactly how I look at it. You know, when I train and when I work out or when I prepare, I mean, it's, it's it's all in the name of the game. You know, it's a lot bigger than than me. Passing the torch. Thank you, Jackie. From Kobe to LeBron, after your late local news, ABC's Nightline sits down with LeBron James and asks him where he will hold court next season. That's after your late local news. Paul Pierce, he was the MVP of the NBA Finals two years ago when the Celtics beat the Lakers. His Celtics now down at halftime to the Lakers. If you don't watch the second half and we come back, something's wrong with you. This